Hey guys, Pastor Joe here, and this is our lesson video for week two of Squad Up, our August series here at Breakthrough. And today we're going to be talking about um, just how we can do for others what God has done for us. We're continuing in our walk through Ephesians. We're going to look a little bit at Colossians as well today. Um, but just want to get us started thinking about um, feuds and brokenness. And have, have you ever had a feud with someone? And it could be a serious thing. It could be a silly thing. Um, like I know we joke around a lot at church um, uh, on Sundays with our Ohio State and our Michigan fans. And there seems to be this impassibility that we can like each other. But, you know, we, we, we still love each other. Um, but have you ever have you ever been in a feud with someone? Have you ever been in a, in a fight with somebody um, where maybe you didn't think that could be reconciled? Um, you, you weren't sure if that friendship would come back again. Um, this, this is no stranger to scripture, the, these situations, the equations. And, and sometimes, um, you know, feuds can be started by, by silly things. You know, I have some Legos here from my girls collection and we'll just, you know, these fights, they kind of can build walls, right? If we let them go and maybe there's, you know, a misunderstanding here or, you know, Oops. some hurt feelings there and oh I don't know you keep adding in maybe there's feelings of of prejudice or feelings of jealousy you know you you name it you can fill in the blank you can think of things that you have fought with somebody else with and before long you know they they all build up and just amounts to this this wall that can be in that relationship and it seems to kind of separate and break those relationships and those friendships we have. Um, you know, it's not just a problem that we've had, but it's a problem that followers of Jesus have had for thousands of years. So you can't see it, but I'm going to set our wall down next to me. Um, we're picking up in Ephesians today, like I said, and, and kind of where we left off from last week, we're going to be in chapter 2, verses 11 to 18. Uh, remember, Ephesians was written by Paul. Um, he was one of the early leaders of the church, founded a lot of churches, and Paul spent a lot of time in Ephesus helping the church get started. And, and remember, when we talk about the church, we're not just talking about the church as a building or the church as an event on Sunday, but we're talking about the church as a, a community of people, a family. Um, we, we talked about the word ecclesia last week at the parking lot and just how ecclesia means a group of people gathered together trying to follow Jesus. So that's how we describe the church. Um, and, and before, you know, days of Instagram and Twitter and TikTok, well, TikTok days might be ending, but, um, you know, Facebook, whatever it might be, WhatsApp, um, letters were the way that news traveled. And so this, this letter to Ephesus is Paul writing a letter to a church family, a church family that he was really close to. Um, and this church family was made up of two groups of people. It was made up of Jewish people and Gentile people. Um, Jesus was a Jewish person. He, he was faithful to the Jewish commands and the Jewish laws. Um, and the Jews were descendants of Israel, descendants of Jacob, and they were God's chosen people. Um, and basically a Gentile is everybody else who wasn't a Jew. Um, so if you weren't Jewish, you were a Gentile. And Jews and Gentiles put this, um, this group together together. This is, this is what the church in Ephesus is made of, of Jews and Gentiles. Um, these weren't people that would hang around each other. Jews usually stuck around Jews and Gentiles usually stuck around Gentiles. They didn't cross paths. They didn't intermingle. Um, and so it, it is kind of a, a weird relationship they have going on at the church, but it also points to um, how Jesus can bring people together and Jesus unites people who are very different from one another. And so we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 18. And instead of me reading it this week, I want you to read it on your own. So we're going to pause here for just a minute and let you read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 18. Ready, set, go. All right, so there's a lot going on in this passage, right? Um, just a quick summary of what is happening, but, but Paul is talking about two walls that have been kind of built up within the life of this church. And they might be, you know, they might be, they're not real walls, not like our, our, our Lego wall here or the wall that's behind me, but they're, they're just kind of emotional and social walls. Um, there was the wall of separation between the Jews and the Gentiles, 
But Paul is also talking about this wall that separates us from God. Um, a, a wall that's not built by disagreements or misunderstandings, but a wall that is built by us and our sin, our rebellion against God. And if you read carefully, you'd notice that Paul says that it's through Jesus and only through Jesus that both of these walls can be knocked down. Can be knocked down. And so, to, to fully understand what this means, we need to back up just a little bit and talk about that wall that exists between us and God. So we're going to back up a little bit in Ephesians chapter 2. And now I want you to read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Got that? All right, let's go. Cool. Cool. So thanks for reading again, guys. And, you know, I've, I thought about, do I want to read it for you or do I want to let you engage the scriptures on your own? And so that's why I'm choosing this week to let you guys read the passage on your own so you can begin to immerse yourself and develop those patterns of Bible reading. Um, so great work on that and keep up the good work. Don't just stop now, but continue to read through the letter of Ephesians. I hope you've read through it a couple times already. It's an amazing letter. It's a wonderful letter. It, it, letter. It's, a, it's a rich letter. Um, it's a good one to, to read and to, to kind of memorize if you if you feel like it. And so, um, okay, we're going to get back into it here. And, and maybe you've heard people use the, the phrase, um, Jesus saves, or you've seen it on a poster, or you've seen it, you know, on uh, people's face paint for sports. Um, and if you didn't have no context about well, what does that mean? What does Jesus save us from? Jesus saves, who's Jesus? Um, if you had no context, this might sound kind of weird, right? But, but the word saved means that Jesus has rescued us. Jesus has delivered us. Jesus' name literally means the, the deliverer, the rescuer. Um, and it's, it's, he's rescuing us and delivering us from a life and, and an eternity without God. Sin, sin is what we need to be saved from. And it's that thing that robs us of our connection with God. To, to truly be united with God. We talked about it this morning in this morning's sermon just saying how Jesus took on our sin. He he who had no sin took on our sin that we might be presented as those who have the righteousness of God before us. You know, because of sin we're separated from God. Um, but but Paul he's not writing Ephesians to remind people of that. He's writing Ephesians to tell people yeah, that's true. That's the reality. But Jesus has come to fix it, and he has fixed it. Through his death and his resurrection, Jesus makes a way for us to no longer be separated from God. He, he took that first step forward, and then he, he pulls down the wall and invites us to kind of walk through this wall that is broken down. And so we can kind of, in some ways, say that, okay, here's this wall that, that maybe we have put up or that the Jews and the Gentiles put up between themselves. But in Jesus, in his death, in his resurrection, he breaks down this wall. And so we no longer have a wall. And you can't see it, but we just have, there we go, a bunch of pieces. But Jesus does so much more than that. In, in the midst of this brokenness, he creates something new. Again, from this morning's sermon, you, you have been made new in Christ. You you are a new creation. And so instead of a wall, let's say Jesus, you know, he's making something new. He's taking our brokenness, our sin, our shame. He is he has thrown it away. He has washed us clean. And no longer do we have a wall. We have I'll get a little fancy here. And I just lost a piece. I'm not gonna go grab that. But now we have a table. And it's as, jo as though Jesus says, here's this table. Here's my table in my house. And you are invited to come and eat at the table with me. You know, walls may keep us separated, but tables bring us together. Tables unite us. They allow us to see eye to eye. Tables allow us to have conversations. They allow us to share meals and they present opportunities for us to invite others to come and join us just as Jesus has invited us to join him at his table. 
It's at the table of Christ that Jews and Gentiles are able to come together to form that early church in Ephesus. And although we can be separated from God, when we surrender our lives to God, when we enter into God's family, we show up at the table. And God invites us, God calls us, God kind of requires of us to begin inviting others to the table with us. We say because of Jesus, we're reconciled with God. But also because of Jesus, we can be reconciled with one another. We can do for others what God has done for us because of what God has done for us. And so we talked about, you know, the feuds at the beginning of our time together today and those relationships that, that maybe there's some brokenness in there. Maybe it's with a friend, maybe it's with a family member. Um, I don't know what that is for you. But I do know that Jesus has broken down that wall and turned it into a table. A table for you to have a conversation at. A table for you to invite others to join you at. And why do we do this? It's not easy. I can tell you that. It's, it's not easy. It's tough. But we reflect the image of Jesus everywhere we go. And Jesus invites us to his table. And so we invite others to our table. That's, that's what it means to be a part of God's family. That, that we take these walls and we break them down and we turn those walls into tables. As part of God's family, we do for others what God has done for us. And so this week, my challenge for you is to start tearing down those walls. To allow Jesus to tear down the walls for you that you maybe have put up in your own life. And allow him the hard work of ripping out those nails and, and, and fixing those boards and recutting the boards and turning. Maybe there's, there's concrete in the wall that just needs to be removed. Whether it's in that wall between you and God or the wall between you and somebody else. But ask Jesus to come into your life this week to tear down those walls. And begin rebuilding them into tables. And so my encouragement for you is that you know that there's always a place for you at the table with God. There's always a place for you there. May our lives reflect that. May our lives reflect the life of our King, King Jesus. And as we go, may we always have room at our table for others. And so the challenge again, tear down those walls, allow Jesus to tear down those walls, and allow him to build tables in your life. And so hope you guys have a great week. We're missing you tonight, but glad we're able to come together and put together those meal kits that are going to be distributed to families in need in our community. Again, it's an awesome table inviting experience that we can say, hey, we, God has blessed us in many ways. And so we take that to bless others, to, to come to the table we have at the church and just to receive free food so you don't have to worry about it. So if you have any friends at school that you know are struggling, just send them a text. Say, hey, Monday, August 10th, Monday, August 17th from 6 to 8 p.m. Come swing by my church. There's food for you guys. They, they, don't, there's, you know, they don't have to ask any questions. We'll, we'll just hand it out. So hope you guys are doing well, praying for you guys. And we'll see you later.